Wow, that beeped a little sooner than I wanted. Oh, well. I figured since I'm going to do this uh, thing, I might as well do it where I can show my uh, thumbnail getting made, too. Okay, so I'm going to open this. Uh, what am I going to open? My recent shot here. Okay, I want to put my, I think I'm going to do red letters on here. This is the thumbnail for the video I'm putting up right now. Docker, VPS, VNC, using uh, the, the term locate to make lists. You can actually make lists of different um, directories and everything, and uh, of different images. If whatever you want to use, locate to find. You can turn, put it into a file to use. And it doesn't seem like that's a big deal until you start using Python, and those lists turn pretty important then. Okay, that's good. Let's go back to letters and make that a capital L. and a capital M. Okay. You poor people today, if you decide you're gonna watch this, because you're at the most exciting point in the video right now. Oh my God, if I can get this thing a little bit bigger. Shift it around. Okay, um, let me, let me make it a little bit bigger. Now to make this stand out, I'm gonna take an outline, the lettering in. First, like I said a lot of times, I make it to image size. Then I want a blank image, a blank layer in here. Then I wanna highlight that red by putting a white border on it, especially against that black. That's gonna look kinda nice then. So there's my selection. I take my selection and I grow my selection bigger by, let's go bigger by four pixels. There you go, look at that. Oh my God, is that gonna stand out? Gonna look there and go, holy mackerel. I can see it from clear across the room now. There it is. Select none. All right. Now I wonder if we could, if we could really fancy this up. Look at this. Watch this. We'll take this and select it again. Then we'll take and select and we'll grow it by one pixel. Oh my God, one pixel is barely visible, isn't it? That's true, but it'll make a difference. And we'll do that one pixel black. And that'll make a little black line around between the uh, red and the white. Okay, so if we zoom right up on that, you know, Zoom, 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 see? We've got the red, the little white line around it. And that ought to stand out good enough. That's good enough to use. So we gotta export it. Export as. And JPEG. there you go there's my thumbnail and that goes right along with my movie now it's movie upload time hey y'all have a oh I'm gonna make a movie out of this that's right oh my god okay hey have a good day bye and I'm gonna attach this on my other movie Jesus today we're gonna do something completely different it started out that I was hoping that I could show how to make one of these, uh, the new Farron OS and turn it into a Docker image, but it was a fail. But it did make me decide that I'm going to show a little bit about Docker. Uh, Docker images are actually um, 
almost like little computers, little operating systems, all in a container. And uh, I've got several on here. And to show your Docker container, if you have, have the Docker images, you do Docker image, Docker images. And anybody that does this and, and realize I just do it for fun is going to think that guy's crazy as a bed bug because I have a lot. I've got a lot. I played with Docker images really strong for, for a long time here. And these are all my Docker images right now. And these are all like separate little computers. If you see the size, they range anywhere from, uh, there's a lot of two giggers in there, two gig, two gig. I mean, there's a, I've got a lot of space, a lot out of space taken up with my Docker containers. Uh, a Docker container you can get inside and it's just a computer. It's like a server. Or you can actually open up a, a, uh, VNC with them. Uh, for example, let's see, what have I got on here? X, X11. Okay, we're going to do Docker images. And I'm going to search for, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to search for one that has uh, X11 in it. There's one I've made up with X11. I think when I made this, this is nothing more than a than gedit, but I put gedit in a container just to see if I could do it. Now I use my little database a lot on FFmpeg, but it's not the only thing. I've got database in here with a lot of commands, and I think I have this. And if I go, Ned, this is the name of the database I use. That's a story and where that name came from because it wasn't supposed to be a database to begin with and it evolved into one. Um, Ned, with a direct search of everything, this is my database, I want a direct search of everything and I want to look for X11 because I think I have the command required to pull that Docker image up. And there it is, okay. So if I take and run that, it will fire up that Docker image. I'm telling it to what it do. I did something not right because that doesn't look right. Hmm. Docker run minus it well I think it removed my slash that I had when I did that and what that did is it started the docker and automatically opened up the text editor and this text editor is in another computer. It's in the, not another computer, it's in another, it's in a container, it's in a Docker container. If I go in here and open and look at my files, this is not my computer. I look at root, home, and there's nothing home. It's not me. This is inside of my uh, Docker container. And the reason I did this was just to see if it could be done. Now what you can do, what you actually could do, is when you fire up this Docker container, you can give it what you call volumes. And when you open up a volume, you could use one, oh boy, am I going to get everybody mixed up here. I don't think I want to do this. I don't want to talk about this right now. But that's what a Docker container can do. And if you want to go in there and look inside of a server, I can do, uh, okay, uh, you can go into Docker, run, minus IT, that's interactive, you want to be interactive in it, and I want to go into, uh, I could go in any container I want to here, I'll go into, um,
I'll go into this one here. And latest, you gotta put the latest in there. That's it. But then I want to run bash in it. And that will open that container up and let me set inside of it. It started up, and there I am inside. If I go like this, LS, I'm inside of that, and that container right now. It's just like being on a server online. It's in a, as a matter of fact, if you look at when I go into my servers, it's very, very similar because you have a name of an operator plus the location. If I go into, I, I, that's what I can do. That could be fun too. All this is supposed to be play. I keep saying it's my Linux toy box. This is a Docker container. Anybody that says anything about Docker containers or have any curiosity, we'll get into it and talk about it. Or I'll do another video on a specific thing. I've got Docker containers that are nothing more than FFmpeg. If you look up here at the top, that's an FFmpeg. I fire that Docker up, and when I run it, I run a, an FFmpeg command, and it's just like if I run it on my machine, except I've got a, uh, this is a, I've got to have a little more oomph to it than what I have on my local machine. And you've seen the Deep Dreaming module. See, I've got Deep Dreamers in there. I go back and exit this. Go back to Docker Images again, Docker Images. And these are all, if I go Docker Images and grip Jack Northrum. These are all ones I built or compiled somehow. These are all the ones I've had in here. And I've got the pad. It's just it's about everything you want to deal with. You can put it inside of a Docker container. You don't have to even put it on your own computer. I guess this is your own computer, but it's such a remote system. What I do inside of a Docker does not happen on my computer. It happens inside of that Docker container. Um, I talk about VPSs too. Now I have um, I have a VPS and show how simple it is for me to get into my VPS. I have a, I have a, a, a batch file made up. That all you do is uh, I pipe it. And when I go pipe it, I automatically go into my VPS. And this will set me inside there. So it's my last login where I'm at. And this is my VPS. This is, I'm in Philippines. This is back in the United States. And this shows all the different goodies I've got in here. I've actually got pictures and notebooks, and I've even got that little NED program I run. I've got that in here. So I, if I'm in my Docker container, uh, or in my, not my Docker, I'm looking at myself getting mixed up. If I'm in my um, uh, VPS, I can still save files and save scripts and stuff like that. I think it'll run just like this. If I go MED. Yeah. And if you, this, this script right here, it says if I run it, it says you didn't pass enough arguments. I didn't tell it to look for something. I didn't do a direct search or list anything. Now I can tell it, okay. I want you to list, go minus R, that's my argument, and I got to follow it by a period. What that does is it's read everything, and there, that's all my scripts, everything I have in there, all kind of goodies in there, or I can search it and go DS, a direct search everything, and see what all has Google in it. There's files with Google in it. But this is out on my VPS. This isn't even on my local computer. This is back in the United States. I think in uh, I think it's sitting in Nevada somewhere. 
This is kind of a weird video, nothing like I had planned. I was going to do the whole thing and try to show how to build a Docker container from an ISO, and it is not easy. Not a bit easy. So if anybody knows how to build one of those um, Farron OSs in a Docker container, leave me a note. And I'm going to call this an end right here. Nothing fancy. Poor everybody. I've been doing things with drawing and everything, and all this is tech stuff. Yeah, I can get out of here. What sure else can I do? What else can I do for fun? Uh, you can do things here. I'm gonna. Uh, this is this kind of neat. I'll just show where you can take and any command you use, or most commands you use, you can put them into a file. For instance, if I go ls, that's the list your list your directory. You can go like this and go okay dot lisc that's going to put that in a file called list and I won't get any feedback here see nothing here but if I go and cat that there's in my directory so what I did here went into a directory now I can do a cat listen if I want to I can go do I have a let's see if let's grip this and see what there is in here that goes uh it starts with an S. Files with an S. There are all those files with an S. Alright, I want to do R S. There, I've got RS sync HTML and RS sync images. Now, the RS HTML, what I actually do with that is when I RS sync the HTML, it takes whatever website I have built on here and it syncs it and puts it up on internet. It puts it up on my on my server, on my VPS. You can also do locate, for instance. I'm gonna. I've already done this because the locate takes a while to do. I'm gonna go cd to um, to home because this is where I've, I've got my files. So I go ls list. These are all things where I've actually gone and went locate. And took everything that was located and put it in a list. So, for instance, if I would do, uh, let me do, a, I'll do a quick locate something that's not going to go too crazy here. Maybe my font list won't be bad. Locate the fonts TTF and put them into list O fonts dot text so I'm doing a locate I don't it's funny I'm sitting here looking at myself and I'm pointing and showing you this with my finger I think I gotta do this with a camera at meet them sometimes too. locate the, the TTF files and put them in list of fonts text so what it's doing right now is it's going through scanning and looking for it's not scanning it's actually going through the database and trying to find all the fonts and it's going to put them in list of fonts so if I go into list of fonts right here it will show the results of that list and I've got that I've got the location of all my fonts and if you see here it shows all the fonts all the TTFs in there all through the computer every one I have in there is a TTF file is now listed in there. So whenever you want to find files, that's in a find files and store them. That's a very neat thing to do. And then you can use Python and go through and look at specific things, copy them, deal with them. Because you can also do images. I could do like this and go. Uh, I'm not going to do it because this, this would be big. I can do it like this, like locate. Um, 
jpg and it's going to give me a giant giant file maybe it won't be so bad if i do pdf i've got a lot of pdfs but i might be able to run that and it's a reasonable thing to do do um I'm going to do this because I already have one with PDF, mo PDFs. Dot L I S T. Now it's going through that database and looking for all of the PDF files. And it's going to put them in that file list right there. So if I go and I cat that, I look at that. C A T. All my PDFs. There's all PDFs. Every PDF I have on this computer. It now listed in that one list right there. Loads of PDFs in there, but it puts them all in. That way, if there's something you want, then if there's something you want to find, for example, if I go, okay, um, let me cat the PDF list and see what I have in that list that has Python in it. We'll look at Python with capital letters. There it is, Python Crash Course and Python Extensions. Now if I do Python with a small p, we're probably in a whole different world. There we got a lot of them. This little tip right here is worth a lot. It's worth a lot. If you don't know that, to be able to find all your images, all your things, everything you want to work with, because if I have even put all my Py files in, um, my Py extensions because you can look by extension. My IPython notebooks. I say I do a lot of notebooks. I do a lot of out of uh, notebooks. Let me go locate. IPy notebook. I'll put that into notebook.list. That could be list or text or whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter what you call it. The extension doesn't matter. Nothing, nothing matters with that. So let's look there. Oh, I didn't do that right. I want IPy. Oh my God, isn't that something? Oh, I've already got it, I've already got it. IPy notebook all right here. There it is. I've already done that. So we can cap that. Look at that list, and here's all the notebooks. Loads of notebooks. I don't remember how many I got. I've got loads of notebooks on everything you want to think about. I've got specific ones towards even the different uh, modules and things. Hey, this is enough video. Oh my God, we got sitting there going, man, this guy's can be boring as hell. Yep, sure can be. Hey, y'all have a good day. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm really curious if anybody got this far. If you are, you're freaking Tonka tough. Let's see if anybody says I'm freaking Tonka tough, then I'll know.